today we will be doing top 39 most inappropriate PG-13 movies. And some of you who knows the films, we will start off with number 39, and at number 39, Skyfall. When James Bond's Daniel Craig's latest assignment goes gravely wrong and agents around the world are exposed, May 6 is attacked, forcing M. Dange to Dents to relocate the agency. These events cause our authority and position to be challenged by Gareth Mallory, Raphianes, the new chairman of the Intelligence and Security Committee. With Me6 now compromised from both inside and out, M is left with one ally she can trust, Bond. 007 takes to the shadows, aided only by field agent, Miss Eve Moneypenny, Naomi Harris, following a trail to the mysterious Diago Rodriguez, also known as Raul Silva, Javier Barton, whose lethal and hidden motives have yet to reveal themselves. Number 38, The Born Identity. When a body is recovered and sees still alive, the mystery man, Damon, seems to have forgotten everything in life, including who he was. Eventually he begins to remember smaller details in life and soon finds out that his name was Jason Bourne. What he doesn't like is the gunning fate passports belonging to him. Now Bourne and his new friend, Marie Helena Cruz, Pent, traveled from country to country in search of his new identity. But someone is not happy to see him alive, and is frantically trying to track him down. Number 37, The Bourne Ultimatum. Bourne is once again brought out of hiding, this time inadvertently by London-based reporter Simon Roggs, who is trying to unveil Operation Blackbriar, an upgrade to Project Treadstone, in a series of newspaper columns. Bourne sets up a meeting with Ross and realizes instantly they are being scanned. Information from the reporter stirs a new set of memories, and Bourne must finally, ultimately, uncover his dark past whilst dodging the company's best efforts and trying to eradicate him. Number 36, Jack Reacher. In an innocent heartland city, five are shot dead by an expert sniper. The police quickly identify and arrest the culprit, and build a slam dunk case. But instead of confessing, the accused man writes the words, get Jack Reacher. Reacher himself sees the news report and turns up in the city. The defense is immensely relieved, but Reacher has come to bury the guy. Shocked at the accused's request, Reacher sets out to confirm for himself the absolute certainty of the man's guilt, but comes up with more than he bargained for. Number 35, Valkyrie. In Nazi Germany during World War II, as the tide turned in favor of the Allies, a cadre of senior German officers and politicians desperately plot to topple the Nazi regime before the nation is crushed in a nearly inevitable defeat. To this end, Colonel Klaus von Steffenberg, an army officer convinced he must save Germany from German leader, is recruited to mastermind a real plan. To do so, he arranges for the internal emergency measure, Operation Valkyrie, to be changed to enable his fellows to seize control of Berlin after the assassination of their Führer. However, even as the plan is put into action, a combination of bad luck and human failings conspire on their own to create a tragedy that would prolong the greater one gripping Europe. Number 34, 42. In 1946, Jackie Robinson is a Negro League baseball player who never takes racism lying down. Branch Ricky is a major league team executive with a bold idea. To that end, Ricky recruits Robinson to break the unspoken color line as the first modern African American major league player. As both anticipate, this proves a major challenge for Robinson and his family as they endure unrelenting racist hostility on and off the field, from player and fan alike. As Jackie struggles against his nature to endure such abuse without complaint, he finds allies and hope where he least expects it. Shockingly, Chadwick Boseman died in 2020, making Marvel fans sad and crying. Number 33, First Man, a biopic on the life of the legendary American astronaut Neil Armstrong from 1961 to 1969, on his journey to becoming the first human to walk the moon. Exploring the sacrifices and costs on the nation and Neil himself, during one of the most dangerous missions in the history of space travel. Number 32, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. The general public is concerned over having Superman on their planet and letting the Dark Knight, Batman, pursue the streets of Gotham. While this is happening, a powerphobic Batman tries to attack Superman. Meanwhile, Superman tries to settle on a decision, and Lex Luthor, the criminal mastermind and millionaire, tries to use his own advantages to fight the Man of Steel. But, Superman sacrificed himself in order to save his mother, Metropolis, Batman and Wonder Woman from Doomsday Lex Luthor, but he is revived in Justice League and Zack Snyder's Justice League, even though the Zack Snyder's cut was rated R. Number 31, Selma. The unforgettable true story chronicles the tumultuous three-month period in 1965, when Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. led a dangerous campaign to secure equal voting rights in the face of violent opposition. 
The epic march from Selma to Montgomery culminated in President Johnson signing the Voting Rights Act of 1965, one of the most significant victories for the civil rights movement. Director Ava DuVernay Selma tells the story of how the revered leader and visionary Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. and his brothers and sisters in the movement prompted change that forever altered history. Number 30, 28 Days, New York-based writer Gwen Cummings knows that she drinks a lot but doesn't believe it's a problem, and if she decides that it is an issue that she could stop drinking on her own. She and her live-in boyfriend Jasper fuel each other's hyperactivity with this excessive alcohol consumption, a normal life is not in either's vocabulary. Between Gwen and her older straight-laced sister Lily, Gwen more closely resembles their larger-than-life mother, who was also an alcoholic and who died because of that when they were children. Lily believes that Gwen's addictions makes her a difficult if not impossible person to love. While Gwen is in a drunken stupor at Lily's wedding, Gwen causes one issue after another, ruining the day for Lily. Gwen is forced to examine her drinking with the culmination of bad events she caused at the wedding, leading to her being court-ordered to enter into rehab or jail for 28 days, which is only marginally more tolerable an idea to her than the alternative, which is jail. For Gwen to make any progress, she has to acknowledge that she has a problem which requires the support during those 28 days not only of the facility staff, but also the other patients, each who is going through his or her own issue with respect to the demons of addiction. If she does eventually acknowledge the problem, she will also have to reconcile the events of her life with Lily and come to the realization that a life with Jasper is not in her best interest if she has any chance of surviving outside of the facility after those 28 days. However, I hate this film because this film keeps 38% on Rotten Tomatoes. Number 29, Barbershop, A Day in the Life of a Barbershop on the South Side of Chicago. Calvin, who inherited the struggling business from his deceased father, views the shop as nothing but a burden and waste of his time. After selling the shop to a local loan shark, Calvin slowly begins to see his father's vision and legacy and struggles with the notion that he just sold it out. The barbershop is filled with characters who share their stories, jokes, trials and tribulations. In the shop we find Eddie, an old barber with strong opinions and no customers. Jimmy is a highly educated barber with a superiority complex who can't stand Isaac, the new, white barber who just wants a shot at cutting some hair. Ricky's an ex-con with two strikes against him and is desperately trying to stay straight. Terry's a hard-edged woman who can't seem to leave her two-timing boyfriend. And lastly there's Dinka, a fellow barber who is madly in love with Terry but doesn't get the time of day. Number 28, Salt. Evelyn Salt is a CIA agent and highly respected by all, including her boss, Ted Winter. Out of the blue, a Russian spy walks into their offices and offers a vital piece of information. The president of Russia will be assassinated during his forthcoming visit to New York City to attend the funeral of the recently deceased U.S. Vice President. The name of the assassin, Evelyn Salt. Concerned about the safety of her husband, who she cannot contact, she goes on the run. Winter refuses to accept that she is a mole or a double agent but her actions begin to raise doubts. Just who is Evelyn Salt and what is she planning? Number 27, Kong, Skull Island, a washed-up monster chaser convinces the U.S. government to fund a trip to an unexplored island in the South Pacific. Under the guise of geological research, the team travels to Skull Island. Upon arrival, the group discover that their mission may be complicated by the wildlife which inhabits the island. The beautiful vistas and deadly creatures create a visually stunning experience that is sure to keep your attention. Number 26, Adventures in Babysitting. Chris Parker agrees to babysit after her boyfriend, Mike Toddwell, stands her up. Expecting a dull evening, she settles down with three kids for a night of TV, and boredom. But when her frantic friend, Brenda, calls and pleads to be rescued from the bus station in downtown Chicago, the evening soon explodes into an endless whirl of hair-raising adventures. Chris and the kids leave the safe suburban surroundings and head for the heart of the big city, never imagining how terrifyingly funny their expedition will become. Number 25, Deepwater Horizon. In April 2010, there is no oil exploration operation in the Gulf of Mexico to compare with the Deepwater Horizon oil rig with its size or sheer depth of its drilling. However, the project for the BP oil company is beset with technical difficulties to the point where the general operational supervisor, Jimmy Harrell, and his chief electrical engineer, Mike Williams, are concerned potentially dangerous trouble is brewing. Unfortunately, visiting BP executives, frustrated by the project's long delays, ordered curtailed site inspections and slanted system tests to make up for lost time even as Harrell, Williams and his team helplessly protest for the so-called proper safety. 
On April 20th, the workers' fears are realized in the worst possible way when the rig's various structural and system flaws spark a catastrophic cascade of failures that would create a massive blowout and explosion that threatens them all, even as it also begins the worst environmental disaster in U.S. history. Number 24, The Butler Cecil Gaines was a sharecropper's son who grew up in the 1920s as a domestic servant for the White family who casually destroyed his. Eventually striking out on his own, Cecil becomes a hotel valet of such efficiency and tenors in the 1950s that he becomes a butler in the White House itself. There, Cecil would serve numerous U.S. presidents over the decades as a passive witness of history with the American civil rights movement gaining momentum even as his family has troubles of its own. As his wife, Gloria, struggles with her addictions and his defiant eldest son, Louis, strives for a just world, Cecil must decide whether he should take action in his own way. Number 23, The Hate You Give, Star Carter is constantly switching between two worlds, the poor, mostly black, neighborhood where she lives and the rich, mostly white, prep school she attends. The uneasy balance between these worlds is shattered when Star witnesses a fatal shooting of her childhood best friend Cowell at the hands of a police officer. Now, facing pressures from all sides of the community, Star must find her voice and stand up for what's right. Number 22, Taken, 17-year-old Kim is the pride and joy of her father Brian Mills. Brian is a retired agent who left the Central Intelligence Agency to be near Kim in California. Kim lives with her mother, Lenore, and her wealthy stepfather Stuart. Kim manages to convince her reluctant father to allow her to travel to Paris with her friend Amanda. When the girls arrive in Paris they share a cab with a stranger named Peter, and Amanda lets it slip that they are alone in Paris. Using this information an Albanian gang of human traffickers kidnaps the girls. Kim barely has time to call her father and give him information. Her father gets to speak briefly to one of the kidnappers and he promises to kill the kidnappers if they do not let his daughter go free. The kidnapper wishes him good luck, so Brian Mills travels to Paris to search for his daughter and her friend. But, the BBFC gives this film an 18 rating and we don't want 20th Century Studios to find out what it is happening. Number 21, Hotel Rwanda, 1994. In Rwanda, the classification of the native population into Hutus and Tutsis, arbitrarily done by the colonial Belgians, is now ingrained within Rwandan mentality despite the Rwandan independence. Despite the Belgians having placed the Tutsis in a higher position during the Belgian rule, they have placed the majority Hutus in power after independence. Paul Ruzasabajina, a Hutu married to a Tutsi, Tatiana Ruzasabajina, is the house manager of the Hotel de Mills Carolines in Kigali. The Mills Carolines, owned by Sabina, the national airline of Belgium, is a four-star hotel catering primarily to wealthy white Westerners. Paul, who knows how to work the system to run the hotel effectively for its guests and for Sabina, is proud that most of the Caucasians who he meets in this professional capacity treat him with respect. After a specific incident, the relative calm between the Tutsi guerrillas and government-backed Hutu militia takes a turn. Paul's thought that the native population as a whole who are not directly involved in the conflict will be protected as the unpeacekeeping forces and thus the world is watching doesn't happen as the western world largely evacuates from Rwanda and abandons the natives. Such begins what will become a genocide of the Tutsi population. Paul, who is able to get his immediate family to the hotel which is still largely seen as a place of sanctuary, will have to use the considerable skills he has used to run the hotel as well as he has instead to keep himself, his family and any others taking refuge at the hotel alive, whether they be Hutu or Tutsi. Meanwhile, Colonel Oliver, a Canadian heading the unpeacekeeping forces, and Pat Archer with the Red Cross do what they can to assist Poland to get people to safety first to the hotel then out of the country, while field journalists, like photographer Jack Dadlish, try to bring the genocide back into the global media to have the world once again care about what is going on. Number 20, Parkland, recounting the chaotic events that occurred in Dallas, Texas on November 22, 1963, Parkland weaves together the perspectives of a handful of ordinary individuals suddenly thrust into extraordinary circumstances. The young doctors and nurses at Parkland Hospital, Dallas Chief of the Secret Service, an unwitting cameraman who captured what became the most watched and examined film in history, the FBI agents who nearly had the gunman within their grasp, the brother of Lee Hart Oswald, left to deal with a shattered family, and JFK's security team, witnesses to both the president's death and Vice President Lyndon Johnson's rise to power over a nation whose innocence was forever altered. Number 19, 1408, the cynical and skeptical writer Mike Emslin writes books evaluating supernatural phenomena in hotels, graveyards and other haunted places, usually debunking the mystery. 
While writing his latest book, he travels from Los Angeles to New York to spend one night in the Dolphin Hotel's Poses Room 1408, which is permanently unavailable for guests. The reluctant manager Mr. Gerald Oling objects to his request and offers an upgrade, expensive booze and finally relates the death of more than 50 guests over decades in the curse room. However Mike threatens Mr. Olin, promising to sue the hotel, and is finally allowed to check into the room. Later in the night, he finds it guests of room 1408. Once they have checked in, Mike never leave the room alive. Number 18, Gridiron Gang, in the Kilpatrick Juvenile Detention Center, the supervisor and former football player Sean Porter sees the lack of discipline, self-esteem, union and perspective in the teenage interns and proposes to prepare a football team to play in one league. If supported by his superiors and a successful experience changes the lives of many young kids. Number 17, Rescue Dawn. In 1965, while bombing Larus in a classified mission, the propeller plane of the German-American U.S. Navy pilot Dieter Dineller is hit and crashes in the jungle. Dieter is arrested by the peasants, tortured by the Vietcong and sent to a prisoner camp, where he meets five other mentally deranged prisoners and guards. He becomes close to Duane and organizes an escape plan. However, the unstable gene opposes to Dieter's plan. When they discover that there is no more food due to the constant American bombings in the area and their guards intend to kill them, Dieter sets his plan in motion. However, an unexpected betrayal splits the group and Dieter and Wayne find that the jungle is their actual prison. Number 16, True Grit. Following the murder of her father by hired hand Tom Cheney, 14-year-old farm girl Maddie Rose sets out to capture the killer. To aid her, she hires the toughest U.S. Marshal she can find, a man with true grit, Reuben J. Rooster Cogburn. Maddie insists on accompanying Cogburn, whose drinking, sloth, and generally reprobate character do not augment her faith in him. Against his wishes, she joins him in his trek into the Indian nations in search of Cheney. They are joined by Texas Ranger Lev, who wants Cheney for his own purposes. The unlikely trio find danger and surprises on the journey, and each has his or her grit tested. Number 15, The Social Network. On a full night in 2003, Harvard undergrad and computer programming genius Mark Zuckerberg sits down at his computer and heatedly begins working on a new idea. In a fury of blogging and programming, what begins in his dorm room soon becomes a global social network and a revolution in communication. A mere six years and 500 million friends later, Mark Zuckerberg is the youngest billionaire in history, but for this entrepreneur, success leads to both personal and legal complications. Number 14, The Perfect Storm. In October 1991, a confluence of weather conditions combined to form a killer storm in the North Atlantic. Caught in the storm was a surfishing boat Andrea Gale. Magnificent foreshadowing and anticipation fill this true life drama while minute details of the fishing boats, their gear and the weather are juxtaposed with the sea adventure. Number 13, Disturbia. After his father is killed in a car accident, things unravel for Kale Brecht and he is placed under house arrest for punching his Spanish teacher. Having nothing better to do, Kale occupies himself by spying on his neighbors. But one night, he witnesses what appears to be a murder going on in Mr. Turner's house. Kale becomes obsessed with uncovering the truth behind these murders but, after a few unsettling run-ins with Mr. Turner, it becomes a matter of life and death. And the Ammonis question. Who is watching whom? Number 12, Ray. The story of Ray Charles, played by Jamie Foxx, music legend. Told in his adult life with flashbacks to his youth we see his humble origins in Florida, his turbulent childhood, which included losing his brother and then his sight, his rise as pianist in a touring band, him writing his own songs and running his own band, and then stardom. Also includes his addiction to them and its effect on his working life and family life. However, the real Ray Charles died on the same day before the movie has been released. Number 11, The Fugitive. A well-respected Chicago surgeon Dr. Richard Kimball has found out that his wife, Helen, has been murdered ferociously in her own home. The police found Kimball and accused him of the murder. Then, Kimball, without justifiable reason, was tried, convicted, and sentenced to death. However, on the way to prison, Kimball's transport crashed. Kimball escapes and is now on the run. Deputy Samuel Gerard from Chicago takes charge of the chase of Kimball. Meanwhile, Kimball takes up his own investigation to find who really killed his wife, and to lure Gerard and his team into it as well. Number 10, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump is a simple man with a low IQ but good intentions. It is running through childhood with his best and only friend Jenny. His mama teaches him the ways of life and leaves him to choose his destiny. 
Forrest joins the army for service in Vietnam, finding new friends called Dan and Buddha. He wins medals, creates a famous shrimp fishing fleet, inspires people to jog, starts a ping pong craze, creates the smiley, writes bumper stickers and songs, donates to people, and meets the president several times. However, this is all irrelevant to Forrest who can only think of his childhood sweetheart Jenny Curran, who has messed up her life. Although in the end all he wants to prove is that anyone can love anyone. Number 9, Lincoln. In 1865, as the American Civil War wins inexorably toward conclusion, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln endeavors to achieve passage of the landmark constitutional amendment which will forever ban slavery from the United States. However, his task is a race against time, for peace may come at any time, and if it comes before the amendment is passed, the returning southern states will stop it before it can become law. Lincoln must, by almost any means possible, obtain enough votes from a recalcitrant Congress before peace arrives and it is too late. Yet the president is torn, as an early peace would save thousands of lives. As the nation confronts its conscience over the freedom of its entire population, Lincoln faces his own crisis of conscience, and slavery around the war. Number 8, Split, though Kevin, James McAvoy, has evidenced 23 personalities to his trusted psychiatrist, Dr. Fletcher, Betty Buckley, there remains one still submerged who is set to materialize and dominate all the others. Compelled to abduct three teenage girls left by the willful, observant Casey, Kevin reaches a war for survival among all of those contained within him, as well as everyone around him, as the walls between his compartments shatter. Number 7, Master and Commander. The Far Side of the World In April 1805 during the Napoleonic Wars, HMS Surprise, a British frigate, is under the command of Captain Jack Aubrey. Aubrey and the Surprise's current orders are to track and capture or destroy a French privateer named the Cairn. The Cairn is currently in the Atlantic off South America headed toward the Pacific in order to extend Napoleon's reach of the wars. This task will be a difficult one as Aubrey quickly learns in an initial battle with the Acheron that it is a bigger and faster ship than the Surprise, which puts the Surprise at a disadvantage. Aubrey's single-mindedness in the seemingly impossible pursuit puts him at odds with the Surprise's doctor and naturalist, Stephen Maturian, who is also Aubrey's most trusted advisor on board and closest friend. Facing other internal obstacles which have resulted in what they consider a string of bad luck, Aubrey ultimately uses mature scientific experts to figure out a way to achieve his and the ship's seemingly impossible goal. Number 6, Malcolm X, Biographical Epic of Malcolm X, the legendary African-American leader. Born Malcolm Little, his father, a Garvet Baptist minister, was killed by the Ku Klux Klan. Malcolm became a gangster, and while in jail discovered the Nation of Islam writings of Elijah Muhammad. He preaches the teachings when let out of jail, but later on goes on a pilgrimage to the city of Mecca, there he converts to the original Islamic religion and becomes a Sunni Muslim and changes his name to el Haj Malik al shabas He is assassinated on February 21, 1965 and dies a Muslim martyr. However, Makam the 10th is 3 hours and 22 minutes, which was also stands for 201 minutes. Number 5, Mission Impossible. Fallout. Two years after Ethan Hunt had successfully captured Solomon Lane, the remnants of the syndicate have reformed into another organization called the Apostles. Under the leadership of a mysterious fundamentalist known only as John Lark, the organization is planning on acquiring three plutonium cores. Ethan and his team are sent to Berlin to intercept them, but the mission fails when Ethan saves Luther and the Apostles escape with the plutonium. With CIA agent August Walker joining the team, Ethan and his allies must now find the plutonium cores before it's too late. Number 4, Dunkirk, May June 1940. 400,000 British and French soldiers are holed up in the French port town of Dunkirk. The only way out is via sea, and the Germans have air superiority, bombing the British soldiers and ships without much opposition. The situation looks dire and, in desperation, Britain sends civilian boats in addition to its hard-pressed navy to try to evacuate the beleaguered forces. This is the story, seen through the eyes of a soldier amongst those trapped forces, two Royal Air Force fighter pilots, and a group of civilians on their boat, part of the evacuation fleet. Number 3, Million Dollar Baby, wanting to learn from the best, aspiring boxer Maggie Fitzgerald, Hilary Swank, wants Frankie Dunn, Clint Eastwood, to train her. At the outset, he flatly refuses saying he has no interest in training a girl. Frankie lives a lonely existence, alienated from his only daughter and having few friends. Maggie's rough around the edges, but shows a lot of grit in the ring and he eventually relents. Maggie's rough around the edges, but shows a lot of grit in the ring and he eventually relents. 
Maggie not only proves to be the boxer he always dreamed of having under his wing, but a friend who fills the great void he's had in his life. Maggie's career skyrockets, but an accident in the ring leads her to ask Frankie for one last favor. Number 2, The Dark Knight, set within a year after the events of Batman Begins, 2005, Batman, Lieutenant James Gordon, and new district attorney Harvey Dent successfully begin to round up the criminals that play Gotham City, until a mysterious and sadistic criminal mastermind known only as the Joker appears in Gotham, creating a new wave of chaos. Batman's struggle against the Joker becomes deeply personal, forcing him to confront everything he believes and improve his technology to stop him. A love triangle develops between Bruce Wayne, Dent, and Rachel Dawes. However, Heath Ledger died in 2008 leaving his fans cries into tears, and here comes the number one, was get on up. En route to the stage, singer James Brown recalls a life with a turbulent childhood where music was his only constructive release for his passions. A chance demonstration at Lytton Prison led to a new friend who helped get him out and into a musical career. With his fire and creative daring, Brown became a star who defiantly created new possibilities and showed business both on and behind the stage in face of racism and conventional thinking. Along the way, James would also become a peacemaker who redefined and raised the African-American community's feeling of self-worth when it was needed most. However, those same domineering passions would leave James Brown alienating everyone around him as his appetites became ever more self-destructive. Only after he hit rock bottom with a serious mistake does Brown realize what he needs to do to make his life as the godfather of soul truly worthwhile.